Oh. Hello, Agent Crow. I wasn't expecting you. Um, please, come and sit down. To what do I owe the pleasure? Hmm. Yes, I forgive my surprise. It's just that I haven't seen you in quite some time. Now, normally the agents that the Bureau recruits, they tend to go on actual jobs, perform their work, you know, that old chestnut. Yeah, well, I know you've had a bit of a, a rough time of it, what with the bartender and that one, that one tends to uh, rough up even some of our finest recruits, but to be honest, I thought perhaps you had quit. I mean, of course, that's not really allowed, but I mean, if you didn't want to do it, I wasn't going to call you back. I was a titch disappointed because you are my only agent, and I did find that perhaps I had failed a bit in, as a mentor. But in any case, I mean, we've tried a few things to mend you, right? Ah. So you want to give it another go? Well, that's wonderful to hear. But, um... Ah, I was waiting for the kicker. So there's still something not quite right. Now, Agent Crow, I don't know exactly what's going on in your personal life. But from all the energy work and all the spiritual healing we've done, there's not a lot that I can do for you otherwise. Unless, I wonder, perhaps the issue is not spiritual at all. Perhaps it's physical. Huh. Give me one moment. I've reserved this for special occasions. Hmm. I might as well just pull it out one by one. All right. Uh, let's see. We have one of these. Not really sure what it does, but convincing enough. Let's see. Oh. One of these. Very good. That should have good use. What else? And this, this is a thermometer. I do know that one. I'm pretty sure I know how to use these. I haven't had to use one in a long time. Almost looks like a medieval torture device now, doesn't it? Ah, I see. It's a noisemaker. Interesting. And apparently I had dessert and never threw away a stick. Ah. This could certainly come in handy. I think it's about... Just put that away. And... Oh! Hmm. These should come in handy. Interesting. Alright. And... Hmm. I do like things that have a possibility of being used in a good beating. It's nice to have around, just in case. And... a few other things. This looks like... a pretty poor excuse to use for listening to music. Well, we'll see how it works. And... Ah, very good. I do know this. This is a sphygmomidomidobutter. 
Sving. Sving you. From one of my limiter. A sving no my limiter. Sving no my mirror. It uh, measures your blood pressure. All right. Well, I suppose I can put this away. Well, yes, I keep all sorts of baskets full of tools and the whatnot. You never know what you might need and on a mission. Not that really I would know, you know, being stuck in the library all the time, but, well, you never know. So, I think we're going to do a good old-fashioned human examination. Now, I would like to set your worries at ease. I am a perfectly professional person and will be able to conduct a perfectly professional examination. Now, this is mostly just to determine if you're fit to go out into the field again. I would prefer that you did. I was hoping that my first mentee would be worth their salt, but I know you've had some some things, right? Anyway, let's go ahead and get on with it. I think we'll just we'll run down the line. We'll see what we can use. Let's go ahead and start with the sphinx. And I know one has to wrap these around their arms. Yeah. So does it matter which arm I use? Hmm. Well, I'll just pick at random then. Okay. That's partially inflated. I wonder... Oh, there we go. Okay. Let's see. Okay, that's taking too long. We'll just... I think it'll be good enough. I mean, is it measuring on... Eh, okay, I'll just take off a few millimeters of HIG and we'll call it good. Alright, are you ready? Okay. So the cup's inflating. I mean, obviously, you can feel that. I can feel that. But the dial's not going anywhere. Hmm. Sorry, that's hurting your arm. Perhaps the dial is just broken, I guess. Um, let me just, I'm gonna squeeze around your arm. I'll get some of that air out. Oh, when I squeeze it, the dial goes. And down it goes. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're just going to have to take that off and put down put down a number. It doesn't have to be correct. It's not super important. All right, well, the Schwingenemenemreder is going back into the basket. There we are. And now we have... A stethoscope. Now, I think, let's do a little bit of that, and, ooh, ouch. E. Okay, so I've got to be very careful with this. Ah, yeah, that's, that's a little loud, but I guess I use this for your heart, right? No, it's just, it's rhetorical. You don't have to, don't have to answer. I'll, I'll figure it out either way. Hmm. 
I mean, I'm hearing something, but it's a little dull. Oh, this is, there is a, uh, large flat plate of bone right there. Although, I wonder, so I'm gonna get around the rib cage here, right next to the spine. That's the way to a vampire's heart, don't you know? <laughs> ah, at least so I've heard. Not that I've actually been able to... It's fine, it's fine. Supposedly I work in the library because there's nobody else who has the patience or, or the talent to work into the library, but still, I do wish that I would have been able to actually be a real agent of the Bureau of the Occult. But you need research. Although maybe if we get you fixed up, perhaps... I may be able to go out into the field myself. Okay, well, I can hear some noises. There's some things in there. I have to listen to your lungs? Okay, that's fine. Um, gonna do some breathing? I mean, I guess you already do breathing, don't you? It's kind of interesting that breathing is autonomous until you think about breathing, and then all of a sudden your lungs are like, no, nah, I don't really want to do that anymore. I have a lot of downtime in the library. There's a lot of things to think about. All right. Well, you certainly have lungs. I can hear them. There's air in, there's air out. Oh, fine. Take a deep breath in. And out. Deep breath in, and out. Deep breath in, and out. Deep breath in, and out. Okay, that's enough of that. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put our stethoscope back into our examination bin. Now that I think about it, perhaps I should have spent a little more time researching medical tools and techniques of when I was in the encyclopedia area yesterday. Then again, I didn't know that you were going to come in. I've never had to do this before, so I'll just call this a learning experience, and then probably after you leave, I'll hit the books. I mean, what else is there to do? It's a little quiet here, so really you took a good time to have a bit of personal leave. So next we have the scissors. I'm not exactly sure what their role is in our examination today. You know what? I could take a sample. I could take a sample. Um, what should we take a sample of? Hair. That, not my first choice, but I suppose, I guess, we'll just take a little sample of hair. So, just stay very, very still. I'm gonna pull a bit of hair and chop, chop, chop. Okay, that didn't quite work. Chop, 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 chop. Okay. Chop, 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 chop. All right. So, I'll just put that on the table, and we'll see how that goes. So, scissors back in the bin. Now, we have a triangle on a stick. Now, to use this triangle on a stick, I'm going to... Test some of your face. I'm going to test some of your face, okay? So, I want you to keep your face relaxed and neutral, and I'm just going to 
very gently test your face. Don't ask what I'm testing for, I'm just going to test. So, let's start at the top here. there's some different reactions, just depending on the place that we're testing. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Hmm. Did you feel anything? Yeah, I think we're gonna chalk that down to results being inconclusive. I think that sounds quite apt, don't you? Now, as for this scoop, this scoop bit, I think, I wonder it almost looks like a tongue scraper, doesn't it? I wonder if I'm supposed to take a sample of whatever's on your tongue. Um, hmm. It doesn't sound quite right, but for lack of other information, that's what we're gonna go with. I'm gonna have you stick your tongue out for me, and we're just going to scrape, scrape, Scrape off your tongue, and I'll just set that next to your hair. We're gonna have a lot of different samples from you by the time this is over, I think. Hmm. Oh well. Now, the stick. I had this in here for a reason. I don't tend to litter. There are certain instances in which you know, I'm a touch too lazy to bring my small bin to the large bin, but overall, I tend to keep things quite tidy. And thus, I have a bin full of medical equipment. But, I'm not sure what to do with this. Do you have any idea? Huh? I, I suppose, I mean, we could try to see if this goes in your ear. Um, that's, that's all I could think of, so I guess we'll see if this goes in your ear. Maybe we're meant to take a sample of the ear. Hmm. Well, I don't have any better ideas. I don't imagine you do. So, let's see here. I'm just going to get very close to the ear and we're just going to There's more than enough whatever that is on that side, so I'm going to flip it and we're going to take samples from your other ear. Thank you. 
okay. I think that's good enough. At least your ear seems to be a bit cleaner than it was before. I'm just going to drop that in an ever-growing pile of Agent Crow samples. To be honest, I don't even know where I'm supposed to take these afterwards, but I suppose I can always look that up after you leave. Now, now we have our noisemaker. But, I'm not really sure. It vibrates a little when I do that. I can't push it like that. It's almost like I have to hit it on something. I don't really want to use myself. That was a little... It was a little too rough for me the first time, but I think, huh, not really sure what we were going to use this for anyway. I imagine we can use this to hit that. I mean, I can hear it a little bit. a little better. Can you hear that? Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we'll give it, we'll give it a few tries. Hmm. Wonder. Ah, that's a lot better. You hear that? I did have to hit myself with it. It's not very pleasant, but hopefully we'll only have to do this a few times. I guess just let me know if you hear it. Maybe we can use that as a hearing test. Hear that at all? I almost barely can't. Hmm. <laughs> I can feel it though. You know what we can use this for, actually? Since I can feel it a lot more than I can hear it, perhaps that's a cue that we should test that you can feel vibration. That must be a very, very awfully important thing if that's what they made this for, so... You feel that? Uh-huh. How about that? Okay. What about that? You feel that? Mm-hmm. You feel that? Okay, and what about that? You feel that? Okay. Yeah, so you can you can feel vibration and you can kind of hear it a bit, and that is quite soft, so that must mean your hearing is pretty good, I would say. So Let's go ahead and just put those back in the basket. Now we only have three tools left. I think I do know how this one works, so perhaps we'll use that one next. All right, let's go ahead and turn this on. And if you could open your mouth, lift up your tongue, and put your tongue back down. Okay, and we'll just sit here for a few moments, and we'll see. Okay, and lift your tongue up. Ah, it says low. Perhaps that's your problem. Perhaps your body temperature is too low, and that's why you haven't been able to work. Hmm. Let me write that down. So far, that's been the only conclusive evidence we've gotten. Ah, low core body temperature. The thermometer didn't give any specifics, but we'll, we'll wager that perhaps it's a couple of degrees lower than what should be normal. 
So we'll have to take that into account, I think. And second to last, we have our measuring tape here. Now in terms of diagnosis, I'm not exactly sure... Is there anything on you that perhaps is maybe abnormally large or abnormally small? Hmm. Not the answer I was expecting, but am pleasantly surprised it wasn't the answer I was expecting. Well, let's go ahead and give it the old shot then. All right, I think right about there. That's good. Huh. I think you're right, Agent Crow. You do have an abnormally large forehead. One might even call that a five head. I'm not sure how that would impede your ability to go out in the field, but that's that's a lot of real estate. You could put a billboard on that and still have some room. That's Quite interesting. And in proportion to the rest of your head, I mean... I suppose it's normal. I guess. It's almost like an inverted triangle, really. She got this pointy thing going on with the... Yeah, it just... I mean, your eyes are of normal size, from what I can see. I'm not exactly sure how large or small eyes are supposed to be. I mean, within normal healthy limits, of course, but not forehead. I don't know what we're going to do about that. That's, that's a whole lot of forehead, my friend. Hmm. I don't know. It's curious, though. I suppose if you don't have anything else... Oh, okay. So your thumbs are different sizes. Well, let's go ahead and check. Okay, so one of your thumbs here... Oh, I see. So from root to tip, it's about two and a half inches long. That's not bad at all. I would say that's normal. Oh, this other one... How did I not catch that before? That's... ah, so that thumb is about five and three-eighths quarter inches? Three. Three-eighths quarter. Why did I say that? Five and three-eighths inches. That's... I mean, do you have a lot of trouble with that? Does that impede your ability to... You know, I don't really want to know. I don't really want to know. I'm not sure how that would affect your ability to work, but... I suppose I can write it down. All right. So, low core body temperature and Agent Crow possesses a five head and thumb length are normal. What was the first one? Two and a half inches? And five and three eighths. Or, if you are a bit of a goober, five and three eighths quarter inches. It sounds very smart, doesn't it? No wonder the bureau stuck me in the library for the smart people, right? Hmm. Now that I think about it, nobody else comes to the library. I wonder... I mean, there has to be other smart people in the Bureau, right? I wonder... Huh. Maybe I'm just uniquely qualified to sit in the library all day by myself without talking to anyone else. Oh well. Let's see. Ah, lastly, we have a little light. Now, you probably don't want to look into this for too long, otherwise you're going to get spots in your vision, but... I think, I think oftentimes I see people bring the light in and look at your eyes, bringing it in, looking at your eyes. So 
your eyes react to the light. Interesting. I suppose all healthy people should have eyes that react to the light. Very good. Very good. Yes, that is quite fascinating. Hmm. All I have to do is just bring it in and there you are. And bring it in. There you are. Bring it in. There you are. <laughs> it's quite nice. Let's see the other. Oh, the other side is a laser. Well, that would come in handy if I had any pets that liked lasers, but unfortunately the library does not quite allow for pets. Although I wonder if I can put a petition in for pets in the library since I'm the only one here. I mean, who cares, right? Anyway, let's just, let's look at your eyes a little bit. So, they're certainly of normal size, of normal color, and they move a little bit in and out when the light comes in and out. Mm-hmm. Very good. That's perfect. I think that's worked the best of any of our tools so far at all. Huh. Very good. All right. So, it works well with the light then. I suppose that's all I have left for the tools. So, I'm going to have to do some research on this, I think. So, low core body temperature, five head, and thumb lengths. I'm not sure what that means, but I mean, there's a thousands upon thousands upon thousands of books in here. I can probably figure it out. Well, I think that that about does it. Did you have any other comments at all, or anything you think might help? Right, well, I agree, it may just be one of those situations where, as the kids like to say, just be like that sometimes, right? We did have high hopes for you, but sometimes things just don't work out, I suppose. But I will say it hasn't been a, a very interesting, right? It, it's not like I get to do much outside of the library anyway, so it's been, it's been quite nice. So, however this decides to shake out, I would like to thank you for sticking with me. I know perhaps I don't really know everything about what it is to be an agent for the Bureau of the Occult, as I am technically not one. Still, it's been fun, I think. Well, let me just note a couple more things down, and then I can get to looking, and you can go back to whatever it is you're doing. Which is what, exactly? What have you been doing? Hmm, interesting. I see. Huh. Well, that does sound worlds above what uh, what this has been like, but I think that overall, again, however it shakes out, it's been it's been nice. So I suppose I better get back to my books, and I do have a particularly interesting bird book that I've been working through. Well, I mean, it feels like the first time, but I think technically it's the sixth. Yeah. For a very large library, they have surprisingly little books on birds, but I mean, that's really all I have an interest in. Birds. 
I only see him when I go home, but still. They're quiet. They're cute. Anyway, weird. So, <laughs> I think that perhaps we should get you back to the quote-unquote real world then, Agent Crow. So, when I have figured out what exactly is going on with you, well, we'll contact you. We'll find a way. And we'll see if we can get you back in the field someday, alright? Okay. Then we will see you later then. subscribe.